Daily Detroit is brought to you by the community. Support our work at patreon.com slash daily Detroit. It's Thursday, friends, and welcome to your Daily Detroit for April 30th, 2020. I'm Sven Gustafson. And I'm Jarrah Stays. On today's show, we run down some of the top headlines, including when the construction industry will be allowed back to work. Plus, there's some interesting Ford and Lincoln related news. Sven will help us understand it all. So let's get started. The state of Michigan says there were 1,137 new cases of coronavirus and 103 deaths in Michigan. This brings the total confirmed cases to nearly 40,400 and 3,670 deaths. We also have an update on the economy reopening here in Michigan. The construction industry is expected to resume operations on May 7th. That accounts for nearly 4% of the state's gross domestic product, according to the Associated General Contractors of America, an industry group. Governor Gretchen Whitmer has unveiled a proposal to give essential workers, as defined by her stay-at-home order, a path to free college education. The so-called Futures for Frontliners program is basically a GI Bill for essential workers. The governor says it's the first of its kind in the country. It would provide a tuition-free path to college or a technical certificate for essential workers who don't have a college degree. Whitmer has a goal to increase the number of working-age adults with a technical certificate or college degree from 45% to 60% in the next decade. The program announcement is light on details, and it still requires work with the legislature to get it funded. Some of the categories of essential workers included our hospital and nursing home staff, Grocery store workers, people who manufacture personal protective equipment, public safety, trash pickup, and child care workers. Speaking of child care, the governor also announced a new child care affordability program during the pandemic. The $130 million child care relief fund will make direct grants starting at $1,500 to child care providers. It'll help keep providers who are serving essential workers open. And it has the aim of making childcare more affordable as the economy starts to reopen. This is being funded by $100 million from the federal CARES Act and $30 million from the state's child care fund. A quick update on what's happening here in the city of Detroit. There have been more than 1,000 deaths in the city from COVID-19 as of Wednesday, an increase of 21 from Tuesday, Mayor Mike Duggan says. The vast majority are seniors and a number of those reported are catch-ups from previous days. Officials also spent a good amount of time on Wednesday talking about the census, including an appearance by rapper Icewear Vezo, who's being an ambassador for the city. The census has huge importance, as many things are determined by it, including representation in Congress and federal funding for local and state governments. People of color and illegal immigrants historically have been very hesitant to fill out their census forms for a variety of reasons, including a severe mistrust of the government. Right now, it's estimated that only 42 percent of city residents have filled out the census. Jerry, I have a question. Yes. Are you familiar with Icewear Vezo? Until today, I was not. Me neither. I'm going to have to look them up. Meanwhile, the coronavirus continues to spread beyond the core here in southeast Michigan. In West and Central Michigan, 28 residents of Ingham County and nine in Ionia County have been infected by a COVID-19 outbreak that's been traced to a massive industrial poultry farm. The Lansing State Journal reports that Herbrook's Poultry Ranch first reported that an employee had tested positive for the coronavirus two weeks ago. Herbrook's is the largest egg producer in the state, and it employs hundreds of workers, including many immigrants. Its massive hangar barns are visible from Interstate 96 between Lansing and Grand Rapids. The farm says it's now doing widespread testing of workers, has put into place strict protocols, and has shut down a portion of the ranch to prevent spreading the virus. It's interesting how this uh, food system is being impacted by the coronavirus, Sven. It's something that we've been watching. Uh, No doubt about it. Uh, And... um, Especially there's news out today that uh, President Trump is invoking the Defense Production Act, which he used for GM famously to force them to start producing ventilators, but now um, trying to get meat production plants back 
you know, to work, uh, you know, because a lot of these in, in rural areas have become real hotspots for coronavirus infection. Do we now get to call him the commander in beef? You know, I wonder, uh, he, he's said to be a famous, you know, steak eater. He likes his steak well done with ketchup. So, uh, yeah, I think so. Eat and eat beef entrees. The old-fashioned family meal, ready in about 10 minutes. Mom? Beef. It's what's for dinner. Sven, there is big news out of four this week. The Blue Oval reported that it lost $2 billion in the first quarter. Man, that is a big number. What is going on? Yeah, big number for sure. Well, Ford blamed its losses on coronavirus. Um, it had actually telegraphed um, earlier, I think last week, that that this huge number was coming. So it's not necessarily a big surprise. But uh, again, Ford blames it all on the coronavirus shutdown. Its plants have all been closed since uh, March, but that really was only the last week of of the first quarter, essentially. Ford has already you know, cut its dividends and its deferred salaries for some of the top executives, and it's borrowed $15 billion from a line of credit. One analyst uh, this week famously suggested that it might be time for Ford to s- to begin seeking a merger partner. You know, I checked before we recorded this Ford stock as we're recording this is currently trading, you know, in the $5 range. Wall Street has been hammering the company for a long time about this and this is only going to increase pressure on CEO Jim Hackett to uh, you know, speed up his vaunted turnaround uh, big time. I mean, certainly the coronavirus shutdown is uh, you know, you can't fault any company for it, but uh, it's not helping matters. They seem not to be clear on when they're going to be getting back to work. It seems like now kind of mid-May is the time where before they talked about May 4th. And then on top of that, that that idea of a merger partner, that sounds kind of intense to me, Sven. Oh, for sure. Uh, in the auto industry, I mean, you're hearing about this a lot, right? Uh, former Fiat Chrysler CEO, Sergi Marchionne famously, you know, rang this bell uh, constantly. You know, he famously tried to um, force a merger with General Motors, but that didn't work. I mean, auto and, you know, legacy auto companies like Ford are, are, you know, they have a lot of pride, right? I mean, they still, Bill Ford Jr. is still the executive chairman. You know, he's he's a family scion and there are still members of his family working for the company. You know, I don't think any of them, you know, are going to take easily to the idea of, of partnering up with somebody, but you know, we'll see. It's just one idea out there and we'll see whether they need to do it. Ford Ford has said that they've got enough cash to get through the end of the year, but we'll see what happens. I mean, we there's, there's a long road to go here. One of the topics that interests me a lot is electric vehicles. And this next piece of news is interesting because Lincoln is now saying that it has canceled plans for an electric vehicle to be developed with Rivian. Uh, That's the startup we featured on this very podcast and for Detroit Public Television. We went out to their facilities. You talked to their CEO. This seems like a big deal. What's happening? Yeah, this one kind of came as a surprise, I think, to a lot of people and, and left a lot of people scratching their heads. Uh, backstory here really quick. Ford last year announced that it was going to invest $500 million in Rivian. And earlier this year, Lincoln confirmed that it would be building an electric vehicle using Rivian's technology and their electric vehicle platform. Uh, Lincoln now says it's canceled those plans and will instead move forward developing its own electric vehicle. Uh, and actually just today the news came out that they have uh, applied for patent protection on a name, uh, Eaglide, which is believed to be that that's a name, elect- Sven. <laughs> it's believed to- <laughs> that's a name. <laughs> it's believed to be a, an electric vehicle name. Most most uh, auto names nowadays that have an E in them, you know, sort of signify electric vehicles. For their part, both Lincoln and Ford and Rivian on the other side say the partnership remains intact, remains strong, and they will work together in the future. Uh, Lincoln followed up by saying that it will continue to work with uh, Rivian on a quote unquote alternative vehicle, whatever that means. Well, if they're going to work on stuff in the future, I mean, what's the reason behind this? Well, I mean, you have to go back to the finances that we talked about uh, in the beginning of this segment, right? I mean, $2 billion loss in the first quarter. Um, and then coincidentally, Ford is warning that its second quarter is going to be worse. They're actually forecasting that they're going to post a $5 billion loss in the second quarter. I mean, that that's a huge, staggering number, right? 
So, uh, I mean, Ford offered as, you know, reasoning for this cancellation, uh, the quote unquote current environment, you know, referring to plant shutdowns uh, and the coronavirus and cash obviously is playing a huge role in that uh, decision. Frankly, it's just probably not the best time for them to be investing in a high priced premium luxury electric vehicle from from Lincoln, right? Which is what we'd be talking about here. Um, sales are, you know, slowed here in the United States, certainly. I mean, I don't think anybody thinks that they're going to rebound, uh, you know, in a hurry once once production picks back up and, and you know, stay-at-home orders are lifted. Um, even before the coronavirus hit, sales were slowing uh, dramatically in China, which is a hugely important market for Lincoln. It's been a big growth market for them. Um, and, uh, you know, I would also note that uh, TechCrunch reported also that Ford has uh, pushed back the launch of its autonomous vehicle um, service with its partner Argo AI to uh, 2022. That's a year long delay. So, you know, I think you're seeing this a lot of auto companies are trying to delay research projects, product launches, new investments, just trying to conserve cash. Before we let you go, a coming attraction. We talked earlier about the uh, meat shortages and the problems with coronavirus infection in, in meat processing plants. That's led to a lot of talk about possible shortages of beef, chicken, and pork. We have a conversation coming soon in your feed with award-winning chef James Regato of Mabel Gray, who points out that after all, there's a lot more to eat in this beautiful state of ours than just chicken breasts and hamburgers. I mean, if you would like a pleasant peninsula, look about you, sir. A pleasant peninsula full of meats. <laughs> a quick reminder before we go, if it's something you can do to become a member at patreon.com slash daily Detroit, so important to keeping the show going. And you will join folks like Rebel Cycle Studio, who has joined us. Your support is greatly appreciated. We're also quickly coming up on our 500th episode, Sven. That should happen early next week. I, Sven, I can't believe it. I know. Remember when we had plans to do something like in the pre-coronavirus era for this uh, occasion, but uh, those plans are going to have to be put on hiatus, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but maybe we should do something online. If you are listening and have an idea, hit us up with an email at dailydetroit at gmail.com. We're here for you. With that, I'm Sven Gustafson. And I'm Jarrah Stays. Take care of each other, and we'll get through this together.